Hello everyone. In this video, we'll discuss about what is cooperative oxygen binding of hemoglobin and the effect of pH and carbon dioxide concentration on oxygen binding to hemoglobin. First to discuss cooperative binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. What is cooperative oxygen binding? Okay, the binding of first oxygen to heme. So in our previous videos, we discussed that the first oxygen molecule bind to alpha chain of hemoglobin and so that the pockets of hemoglobin will be widened and it facilitates the further oxygen binding to the other globin chains of hemoglobin. Okay, so the binding of first oxygen to heme of the hemoglobin enhances the binding of oxygen to remaining heme molecule of hemoglobin. This is called cooperative oxygen binding of hemoglobin. So to show the picture, you see here, so four chains are there, alpha 1, uh, beta 1, alpha 2 and beta 2. So what I mentioned, first oxygen molecule will bind to alpha chain of the hemoglobin. So once this alpha uh, chain get occupied by uh, alpha chain heme molecule occupied by the oxygen, there is a widening or opening of the pockets of the hemoglobin so that further oxygen molecules can go and occupy the heme molecule of hemoglobin. You see here when first molecule occupies the alpha chain of uh, uh, hemoglobin, then alpha 2 chain molecule also occupied by second oxygen molecule and third oxygen also occupied to the beta chain and fourth to the beta 2 chain. Okay, so this is called cooperative mode. That means binding of one oxygen molecule facilitates the binding of further oxygen molecules to the rest of the globin chains. Okay, this is called cooperative binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. So how it is possible? The binding of first oxygen to alpha chain of hemoglobin causes confirmatory changes. Okay, that means uh, as we said, two forms are there. Deoxy, uh, deoxygenated hemoglobin is known as uh, stress form or T form and oxygenated hemoglobin known as uh, relaxed form. Okay, so the confirmation when one oxygen binds to hemoglobin, the confirmation from T form to R form so that further attachment of oxygen to globin chains. So that means it enhances the affinity of oxygen binding to heme molecules of globin chains. And coming to the shape, okay, so the shape of oxygen binding curve of hemoglobin is sigmoidal. So when you plot the percentage of saturation of oxygen with hemoglobin, okay, so when you represent it in a graph, okay, the shape of the curve what you get on the graph that is sigmoidal, okay. But when you see myoglobin is also a oxygen transport protein, okay, but it is seen in muscles, okay, and uh, there is a lot of few, few a lot of functional uh, variation when you compare hemoglobin with myoglobin okay myoglobin is a single polypeptide chain hemoglobin is a quaternary uh, that means uh, the four polypeptide chains are there okay and there is no cooperative binding of oxygen in case of myoglobin what you can see in hemoglobin so that's why you will get hyperbola curve you see here in the image in the graph he myoglobin there is no cooperative binding okay so that's why the red color there is a hyperbolic curve okay but in case of hemoglobin there is a cooperative binding so when one molecule of oxygen bind to alpha chain of hemoglobin rest of the chains will be opened and further oxygen molecule will go and bind so that means one hemoglobin molecule will carry four oxygen molecules so right so oxygen binding curve for hemoglobin myoglobin so you can make out the difference this uh, the graphical representation shows for myoglobin it is hyperbola but in case of hemoglobin, sigmoidal. And this sigmoidal curve facilitates more oxygen binding. That is oxygen, uh, cooperative binding of oxygen. And now coming to Bohr effect. That means effect of pH. Okay, how this pH affects the uh, loading and unloading of oxygen. Okay, so hemoglobin is also transports significant amount like uh, about 20% of total hydrogen and CO2 from tissue to lungs and kidneys because Hydrogen, so you might be thinking, uh, what is the source of this hydrogen carbon dioxide? So don't think that the air what you are inhaling, it contains CO2. There is a 
production of CO2 at cellular level. That's why we know as cellular respiration. CO2 will be produced because of lot of chemical reactions inside the cell and this CO2 has to be evacuated from inside to outside. Okay, so as the hemoglobin takes oxygen from lungs to tissues, it loads its oxygen at tissues, okay, inside the cells and it takes out whatever the CO2 produced at the tissue level and it brings back to lungs and from lungs it will be expelled out. Okay, so meanwhile to carry that carbon dioxide, it also carries hydrogens. Okay, and it carries these hydrogens not only to the lungs but also to the kidney. Binding of hydrogen ion concentration. So otherwise it is known as pH. Hydrogen, how you define a pH? pH is nothing but negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, so binding of hydrogen and CO2 to hemoglobin decreases the affinity for O2. That means the affinity of hemoglobin towards carbon dioxide and hydrogen is more compared to O2. Okay. So thus relatively low pH and high CO2 concentration in peripheral tissues. Okay. It affects the affinity of hemoglobin. Whatever the oxygen is there in the hemoglobin will be discharged and it leaves the oxygen and it takes up the carbon dioxide. Okay. So this hydrogen concentration facilitates the unloading of oxygen at tissue level. So conversely in the lungs the CO2 is excreted and blood pH consequently rises. The affinity of hemoglobin for O2 is increased. So this is vice versa you can see at uh, tissue level it is totally different. There O2 will be unloaded and CO2 will be taken by the hemoglobin and once it reaches to the lungs okay the CO2 is excreted and the blood pH is consequently rises. That means whatever the acidic pH, okay, it will be bring back to the normal alkaline pH. So there the CO2 will be unloaded and again the affinity for hemoglobin to oxygen is increased. So this effect of hydrogen ion concentration, I mean pH and CO2, okay, on binding and release of O2 by hemoglobin is called Bohr effect. So Bohr effect is how you define Bohr effect. Bohr effect is nothing but the effect of pH and concentration of CO2 on binding capacity of hemoglobin towards oxygen. Okay. So here diagrammatic representation three parts I made. Okay. Lungs, blood and peripheral tissue because gases are exchanged at the level of lungs. Okay. And where it is where they are going. Okay. At lungs oxygen will be taken by the hemoglobin and it will be loaded at lungs. It traveled in the circulation and it will be unloaded at tissue level that means cell okay you see here when you uh, when you inhale air okay it is a combination of both gases oxygen and carbon dioxide so it will take up oxygen okay and it will be take up oxygen okay you see here hemoglobin 2h so when there is oxygen present it will be converted to oxygenated hemoglobin and this oxygenated hemoglobin transport or circulated in the blood and it reaches to the peripheral tissue okay, when you when it goes to the peripheral tissues there the con uh, conditions like acidic conditions more hydrogen concentration more carbon dioxide okay and the carbon dioxide how it will be transported there is no direct transportation so here as it CO2 and water is there okay CO2 in combination with water it forms bicarbonate okay that is bicarbonate and this bicarbonate splits into hydrogens okay that means carbonic acid carbonic acid splits into bicarbonates and hydrogens okay as i mentioned the affinity for hemoglobin is more towards hydrogens and carbon dioxide so here at tissue level more hydrogen ion concentration so that it leaves the oxygen so oxygen whatever left over at the tissue level enter into electron transport chain and reduced into water so that is a source of water here okay and whatever the co2 produced because of oxidation of glucose it combines with carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid okay so again this carbonic acid split it to bicarbonate and uh, hydrogens and this hydrogen is taken by hemoglobin and it converted to hydrogenated form of hemoglobin and it will reach us to the lungs where there is uh, release of these hydrogens at the lung level again where bicarbonate combined to form carbonic acid and this carbonic acid splitted into carbon dioxide and water and this carbon dioxide shifted out I mean like expelled 
outside of the body so this is the overall mechanism of bore effect okay so here the involvement of peripheral tissue and lungs that's all about cooperative binding of oxygen and effect of ph and carbon dioxide to the oxygen binding towards the hemoglobin thanks for listening thank you